So Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Praise be unto God. Now, Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Beseech is urging. He's, urge, he's calling, he's making a personal call unto everyone he's uh, writing to. And he's saying, I, it's a personal call unto you. Brethren, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God. He's a preacher I like to listen to, and he used to say, when you find a therefore in the Bible, you pause and ask yourself, what is it therefore? Praise the Lord. So, he starts his speech like this. I beseech you, therefore. So, we need to find out what is this therefore, therefore. In the previous chapter, and you know the Bible was not written in chapters, so it was continuous. Me, what to will split into the different categories and ideas for our own references so that we are able to say Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Amen. But in Romans chapter 11 from verse 33, as you are reading it, you see, the Bible says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be compensed unto him. Again, for of him, praise the Lord, and through him, and to him, are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, therefore, praise be unto God, because all things are unto him, because all things are through him, and because all things are for him or of him. Therefore, brethren, including yourself, you are his thing. Look at yourself and tell yourself, I am his thing. Because of that, therefore, I am beseeching you. The Holy Spirit is making a personal call to each and every one of us. And it says, brethren. It's funny, even brethren have to be urged. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's interesting that even people who belong to the household of God, God has to urge them. Hallelujah. But he says, let's continue, brethren. By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. This is the urge. This is the message. This is the personal call that God is making to each and every one of us. That we present our bodies as living sacrifices. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. It is a call. Present your bodies. Present, if you have never noticed, nobody ever presented by mistake. Accidentally. Oh, anybody who has ever made a presentation, they always do it willingly. Praise be unto God. Your will is actively used. And, the, and this word present means you go and stand by. Closely to what you have, you stand by it. That's the presentation you are making. And the Bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. So if you can already see, this is an act of worship. Because where were sacrifices presented? 
in the old times on an altar as an act of worship. Hallelujah. So the Bible, Paul is telling the Romans, take your body, go take it to the altar and stand by there. That is the presentation you are making. And for us, at least I can confidently say this, in this church, we don't have altars. We only have one altar. Praise be unto God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13. If you can go there quickly. Wow. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 10. The Bible says, We have an altar. Glory be unto Jesus. The Bible does not say, And we have altars. Praise be unto God. It is an altar. One. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know uh, from where we come from, we have altars. Uh, Migumo trees. There can be many. Hundreds. We know other people who worship on mountains. Mountains are many. They can worship on those mountains. But for us, we have an altar. Glory be unto Jesus. And it is not this pulpit. This pulpit is not an altar. This is just a place where we have marked so that we are able, uh, all of you are able to see me. <laughs> well, it is not holier than where you are. <laughs> Praise be unto God. This, this is a hired hall. After Tumetoka E Church, there could have been a group that has hired the hall to come and do wicked things. Praise be unto God. There could be. Nasande to Kifika, Hatuta Kuja Namajia. Dio Tufkuze Madimoni Kwanza. No. This is not the altar. This is not the altar. I know there are people who call their churches altars. It is not that. We have an altar. And verse 15, Hebrews 13 verse 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer. Praise be unto God. So when we are making offerings, when you are presenting offerings and sacrifices, you do them on an altar. And for us, our altar is Jesus Christ. Any time, any day. If you go to the Old Testament and you read how the altars were made, God commanded them, you are to make them of soil. This soil that we collect outside. Hallelujah. If you feel like it's not enough, it's a sacrifice, you collect stones that are not cut by any tool. Hallelujah. Do you know why God told them that? First of all, it's because the material for the altar had to be available for everyone. If God had asked for an altar of gold, some poor people would never have been able to sacrifice. If he asked for an altar of marble, some of us don't even know how marble looks like. <laughs> yes, it's expensive, it's unique. But God said, make it of soil or stones that are collected that have not been hewn nicely or made. Because this altar always referred to the Jesus who is coming. Praise be unto God. And Jesus would be an altar for every person, rich or poor. See, in the Bible we saw rich men coming to Jesus. Kinajiras, Amanijiras. And we had poor people, like the woman who had a bleeding problem. The Bible says she had spent everything she had on doctors. So she was now poor. Praise be unto God. And all this could be able to access Jesus. Hallelujah. Even for us. Present your bodies on the altar, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, they had to bring an animal and kill it. They had to stand there as the high priest in and check whether it is correct, ikosawa, does it have a broken bone, tick, tick, tick. When ticked, they kill it there on the altar. 
But this one, the Bible is saying, present your bodies a living sacrifice. This one, you don't kill by hacking, taking away the blood. Praise be unto God. You kill it by presenting it on the altar and telling it, no, <laughs> stay there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. You, you may wonder, wh why did Paul say, present your bodies? I don't know what other translations say, Ken. I don't know what they say. But I think, yeah, they just say offer. Uh, offer. Yeah. But the Bible says present or even offer, which could be correct. Because this is a sacrifice. It's an act of worship. Your body's living sacrifice. You, I was, when I was reading this, I was asking myself, God, why did you say we present our bodies? Why not say uh, present our spirits <laughs> or something else? But then I realized he's talking to humans. Praise be unto God. We know humans are three components in one. We, we are uh, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Did you know that angels uh, are only spirits? They did not have bodies. Hallelujah. The Bible says they are ministering spirits. They don't have bodies. They are spirits. Hallelujah. But for humans, we are spirits who have souls living in a bo. So when he's addressing bodies, he's not just saying this flesh only. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, thank you Patricia, <laughs> you got us there first. He said, he took bread and then he said, this is my what? Which is given for you. Take it and eat it. Jesus is the ultimate example of sacrificing the body. Hallelujah. But was he offering just the body? He was offering his whole life as a human being. He was saying, my life is for you. Everything about this life I have lived here, everything I've done these 33 years is for you. So he's offering, yes, he says body, but it is his life that he's offering. Hallelujah. Glory be unto Jesus. So when Paul is saying, offer your bodies a living sacrifice, he's talking to your whole life. Amen. 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 Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, why do you worry about what you will eat or drink or wear? Hallelujah. What are those things all about? Food, drink, clothes. What is it all about? Your body. Amen. Is it good to eat? Amen. But is it good to worry about what you eat? <laughs> no. Because you are feeding your body. It is necessary. It is needful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God knows that we fend so much for our lives as naturally as we can. Praise be unto God. That's why Jesus had to address that issue. We try to cater for our material needs first before we can cater for any other needs second. The, 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 the hierarchy, the, the wasomi, they know how to rank those needs and, and those basic needs Yet, being the most basic are the ones that take most energy of most people. But Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, he says, But ye seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He flipped the, 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 the energy levels where they are supposed to go. Hallelujah. Don't focus so much on your body on what you will eat, on what you will drink, 
The Bible says your father in heaven knows that you have need for these things. Hallelujah. So when they are coming at the angle of the body, they are addressing that life, the life that we try so much to live. Eh? Una rauka, una enda job, you're tired. I'm not saying we don't do that. We do it. Amen. But remember that we are doing all these things, offering ourselves, our whole lives, on the altar Jesus Christ, and the Bible says, unto God. Hallelujah. Praise be unto Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, if you ask yourself, is God interested in human sacrifices? Is he interested in human sacrifices? The Bible says that he has never been interested in human sacrifices. Thus, that was the practice of the pagan communities that lived around Israel. They are the ones who would offer children to their gods. They would burn them. And that act was abominable unto God. He would have none of that. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. And the only time we see God asking for a human sacrifice, you know where? In Genesis 22, when he told Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Imagine he even named Isaac, Ndiyo Abraham asijifanya, ah, labda ni Ishmael. Because <laughs> he had another son, ndiyo? <laughs> but God said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and take him to a place I will show you and offer him there as a burnt offering. Hallelujah. Thank God for us, we have read, we know the Bible says God was testing him. Amen. So God knew what would happen, but he's saying it to test the heart of Abraham. Hallelujah. But did Abraham know? He didn't have the Bible then, so he had not read that chapter. He had not seen that. The, the Bible starts by saying, and God tested Abraham. He had not. Him, when God asked, he knew. Sasa hii ni hivyo. Sasa... This is it. But thank God, Abraham was a man of faith. He had been told many promises that would be fulfilled through Isaac. Therefore, he knew, even if I go and kill this boy, I am coming back with him. Because the promises have not been fulfilled. Hallelujah. God had told him, I will multiply you and make you a father of many nations. Through this one, Isaac. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Abraham had asked God, God, what will you give me, seeing that I have no son? And this Eliezer of Damascus is the one who's going to become my heir. And God gave him a son. Now the same God is asking for the son. But Abraham knew. I know God will raise him up again. Hallelujah. And that is the attitude that is being asked of us in Romans 12. We offer that which we love. We love ourselves. You don't need to be taught to love yourself. Like some psychologists and new age teachings have come and say. Yeah. We already love ourselves. Hallelujah. And we know how to fend for ourselves. We want good things for ourselves because we love us. Hallelujah. And even we have tried to use God to get good things for ourselves. Amen. Therefore, he knows that you love yourself, but he's asking you, will you now offer yourself? Don't kill yourself, yes, but offer yourself as a living sacrifice unto me. Praise be unto God. We know you are tired. You've worked very hard the whole day. And you go home and then the, the, the WhatsApp in a ding. 
link Leona metuma hapo. Let's join in prayers, brothers. Yeah. <laughs> then wewe unaiona tu na uko ah, me I'm tired. Will you offer yourself? Hallelujah. Take your tired self into that link. <laughs> Praise be unto God. You join and stay there. Hallelujah. When you are asked to bribe so that you may pass your driving test. And everybody does it. Will you sacrifice your desire to drive a car <laughs> and do what is right because holy, the Holy Spirit has told you no? Hallelujah. Yeah. And I know you want to date that girl. <laughs> but she's an unbeliever. Praise be unto God. She ticks all your boxes. She does not tick the, the, the Holy Spirit's box. Yeah, she ticks yours. But his, as a tick, utakubali kukaa singo. But will you sacrifice yourself just to obey God? Utakubali your life you feel like it has a disadvantage to it because God has asked you to obey him. Praise be unto God. The Bible says that when Abraham had gone up that mountain, na pia liulizwa maswali na Isaac, I just imagine that journey. I don't know how Abraham took it, but thank God for the faith that he had. When his son is asking him, Father, here is wood. I actually am the one who is carrying the wood. The wood. <laughs> you are carrying the fire and the knife. But what are we going to sacrifice? If it were you, Chester, because you have a son. <laughs> and I know he talks right now, so he can ask you questions. If he asked you that question, would you still tell him that the Lord will provide? I'm out answer to Kulia. Will you break down in tears because of how heavy what God has asked you is? Can you imagine God asks us of lesser things than what he asked Abraham? Way, way less. And we still disobey him and disgruntle and complain like Mungu kama unataka kuniua niue just because he told you not to eat lunch on Friday Kama unataka kuniua niue mimi nimechoka kuteseka hii dunia Amen Thank God when Abraham had the Bible says he had offered up Isaac in Hebrews like to God and to Abraham Isaac was dead he was gone. Abraham was not turning back. Mungu amesema. Kaende, kaende. Hallelujah. But when God had stopped Abraham from killing his son, he told him, now, in blessing, I will bless you. Watch out to bless. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Praise be unto God. Because I have seen that you will not withhold anything from me. Hallelujah. Do you want the blessing of life? Jesus anasema, sasa huyu, nime mfungulia store ya blessing. Aingia jichukuli. Huyu si mchukuli. Ingia. Ingia store ya blessings. Ujichukulie. By just living as a sacrificed person. Hallelujah. Just living your life knowing that my life is not mine. It belongs to God. And the Bible it says, uh, by the mercies of God. If you have, as a Christian, have ever sat down and considered the mercies of God and seen what a great sacrifice he has done, for you to be where you are. Upige tu hesabu. 
Jesus said, count the cost. Don't just build for because utaishiwa katikati and then you'll start complaining. Count the cost. What has God paid for you? And what is he asking of you? They are not even comparable. Hallelujah. Whatever he has done unto you, he, he Romans 11 in Auliza, who has given to him first? Praise be unto God. Arudishiwe. Because nobody has anything in this earth that they have that they have uniquely that they can give to God. Everything you have, you have received. Praise be unto even the name you carry. You, <laughs> you received it from your parents. Imagine how key to dunia. Hallelujah. Nobody ever gave themselves anything in this world. That's why the Bible says, naked you came. And naked utachomo. So, what do you have first that you could give to God? Eh, apige esabu wakurudishie. Hallelujah. Eh, you have it? Yes, I'll return it. That's what God is saying. But if you consider yourself to have received everything, I, I saw this one test once on social media where a, a pastor stood up like this and then he started talking and he said, brothers, I think I need a car. Can anybody offer their car for me? And then quickly, someone akakimbia na kifunguo. Then akasema, I think for the ministry, I will need an iPad. Anybody who wants to offer an iPad for the Lord? Somebody pia akakimbia akampea iPad. And then he said, and now brethren, we can start. And just for your information, the, the, the people rushed here to give the car, the car keys and the iPad because I had given them before I entered the service. <laughs> they are just returning my things. And if you consider whatever you have as having been given first by God, you will quickly run when he asks for it because it is his. Praise be unto God. Wewe mwenye unaumango kitoa sadaka. Toe mia mimi na ni mutu hamusini. Remember, hiyo mia, haikuwa yako. It was not. Mimi ni toe mia. Comrades. <laughs> I know a 50 bob is a big thing for a comrade because I was there. Hai, hamusini unaifinya inatoshea wiki. Hamusini wiki. My God. Anyway, the Bible says we offer up our bodies as living sacrifices unto God. Amen. Stop offering yourself for any other thing because that's an idol. Amen. Amen. What were body goals? <laughs> Stop idolizing gym and, and sexual whatever. Amen. Stop offering your bodies for other things. Hallelujah. The Bible says, therefore glorify God in your bodies and in your spirit. The only way you can sacrifice to God is if you recognize he is the actual owner of whatever he's asking for. <laughs> Amen. Do you remember the proverb we read, the parable, sorry, we read a while ago in reading Matthew, where a certain rich man left his vineyard with servants. His vineyard, he left it with other people. Then he went on a long distance. And then when he started asking for the harvest, they start killing his servants. Amen. When God is asking for the body, your body is a living sacrifice, and you are denying him, you, Nahao servants, you have joined this WhatsApp. You and them. Ha! Because the, the, the shamba was not the yes. Sindio? The fruit was not the yes. They did not do anything to the shamba. They were just left wangalietu. But when he asked for the fruit, they were like, we don't do that here. 
Uliacha e eh, we endo kiendaga. <laughs> Amen. But when God asks for it, please, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, offer it unto him. And the Bible says, holy and acceptable. Glory be unto Jesus. Amen. Now, I could say many motivational things there. But let me just say this. When you have managed to take your body and place it on the altar, Leo, Kesho, this week, next week, this year, next year, what God is doing is receiving your sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. Amen. Why? Because this sacrifice is on the altar, Jesus Christ. That is where your holiness and acceptability echo. Praise be unto Jesus. On that altar, who is Jesus? Christ. Glory be unto Jesus. The holy and acceptable sacrifice is that which is offered, a living sacrifice, on the altar of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. And the Bible says, for this is your reasonable service. Amen. What does reasonable mean? Logical. Amen. Hesabu ina ingiana. Glory. You know, for, for some Christians, especially in cults, and when you are mechoka na being responsible for their own lives, they like kuingia kwa auto mode, switch off the brain. No. As Christians here, keep the brain switched on and also the heart. Amen. Because God will not receive your brain worship. He will receive your heart, but he wants you to do it willingly after you have reasonably thought and seen and logically decided that God is worth my sacrifice. And I was thinking, it's easier to die for God than to live for him daily. Because dying physically, you'll only do it once. Na makosa kifanyika ufufuliwe twice. Maximum. <laughs> Maximum. Sindio? But to die daily, willing of your own self, daily, is a bit utangangana. In fact, you will find that you have offered yourself on the altar today. But ikifika 6 a.m. asubuhi, eh, usha crawl. Because you are a living sacrifice, you, you, will, you tend to run away from the altar once in a while. But please run after yourself. Catch yourself. Rudisha wapi? Every day of your life. Amen. Until when Jesus comes again and we receive new bodies that only want Jesus. And nothing else. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. But when you are doing that, you are doing a reasonable work. A reasonable service. Amen. In Maju, we always see in the movies when someone said, oh, I'm a former veteran, war veteran, nini, nini, they always say, thank you for your service. And if you want your thank you for your service from God, this is it. At the end, when he says, well done, good and faithful servant, enter the rest. Hallelujah. This rest is what we are saying now. It's a sacrifice where you will not be running away from the altar. Because when you run away from the altar, you have to chase yourself. God will not chase you. <laughs> When you run from the altar, yes, yes, he'll try to lead and guide you back to himself. But you are the one who is to willingly catch yourself and bring yourself to the altar. As I finish, the prodigal son, 
when he had gone into a far country, praise be unto God, kikam ramba, life ili mpata, akiwa kona, life ikaita wenzake, ikatandika jama, but then the Bible says, when he had come back to his senses, hallelujah, I pray that people come back to their senses. <laughs> when he had come back to his senses, he said, how many of my father's servants have enough bread to eat and to keep? Imagine God gives servants more than enough. How much more their children? The children of the father. Then he said, I will rise up and go back to my father. Praise be unto God. The good thing is that the father was always yearning for him to come back. Amen. He was always watching. Alienda hivi. Inaweza kuwa ni yeye. Ah, bana huyo ni Ken. Every day. Amen. So when he came back, he brought himself. And the father saw him and ran to him and embraced him. Hallelujah. When you run away from the altar, if you have, come back to your senses. <laughs> Remember how good your father is. Glory be unto Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we will finish our sermon there today. The, the, the Bible says um, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, come, let us reason together. And then verse 19 says, if you are willing and obedient, what will you do? You will eat the good of the land. Reason and reason with God. Don't reason with Satan. Reason with God and obey him willingly. Yeah, 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 yeah.